Hello, and thank you for joining us this morning, or whatever time it is, if uh, you're in a time zone somewhere else in the world. My name is Lynn, and I'd like to welcome you to the Follow Me Trades East Meets West live webinar. Webinar? No, it's a webinar. Okay. A couple of administrative items before we get started. Just in case you've never been on a GoToWebinar meeting before, the first thing I'd like you to take a look at is your control panel, and it's usually located on the right-hand side of your screen. And we're going to look for a section called Questions. This is where if you have a question for Dean, you can type it in. And um, we're going to test that out real quick. Why don't you open up the questions and type in your city and country. That way we can make sure that everyone can hear me this morning and that you have located the question panel. If you want to uh, extend that panel, you, you can, uh, there's a little, little tiny arrow to the far right, right next to an X. If you click on that arrow, that will extend the question panel and make it uh, larger for you. And look at that. We've got all kinds of people starting to come in. We've got people from Texas from New York, Nottingham, UK, welcome Barry, Houston, Southern California, Geneva, Switzerland, we've got Mike in Cincinnati, we've got uh, Dean coming in from Panama, this is absolutely great, we have a Lenny coming in from Singapore, so we definitely have people from all over the world and we welcome you to our webinar. The um, last thing I'd like to take a look at on the uh, administrative side is in the same control panel where you saw the questions, there is a uh, menu called chat. This is a little chat space where I can be posting information and links that um, might be coming up if, during the uh, webinar with Dean. So let me just real quick post in the chat area my email address so you can see what the chat area looks like uh, when it's used. And, and if you need to get a hold of me, if you have any questions, you have my email address and you can do that. So that's great. So we've located the questions. We've located the chat. I think that's, uh, we're good to go. So I'd like to, again, welcome everybody. And I'm going to introduce our presenter now. Our presenter is Dean Jenkins, the founder of Follow Me Trades. With over 20 years of trading and investing experience, Dean makes his living trading the financial market. He is an expert in technical analysis, money management, and Elliott Wave analysis. Dean is also a featured educator for Trader Kingdom and TradersCoach.com, and he coaches traders around the globe, helping them reach their financial goals. This morning, Dean is going to be talking to you about East Meets West, or the Ichimoku Cloud, and the Elliott Wave. Dean, did I get Elliott Wave uh, pronounced correctly there? You got them both. Sounded awesome. Sounded awesome. Well, great. So I'm excited to hear what Dean has to say about these two strategies, as I'm so sure you are too. So Dean, go ahead and take it away. All right. Thanks, Lynn, for that great introduction, and thanks, traders for being here. I am excited about this material that we're going to present today. Uh, I was so excited I got up and did it at 6 a.m. this morning. I'm in the greater Seattle area and we did one, a session earlier this morning for folks who are like on the East Coast or that's just a better time for them. So this is the second time this morning so I'm warmed up. All the mistakes are out of the way and so you're getting the, you know, the, uh, the, the finer tuned version of the presentation. All right, and again I'm glad to be here. Uh, just before we get started, a quick disclaimer, and that is that uh, everything presented today, and I'm going to show live charts and talk about some trades that I'm taking, analyze your charts. Everything I'm presenting is for information education purposes. I'm not a financial advisor, and if I were, I wouldn't know enough about your situation to be able to give you advice. So I'll simply offer my opinion, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing. Um, but ultimately, any trade or investment that anybody takes is is the it's the responsibility of that individual okay so this is for education and information purposes all right I'm gonna walk through these areas today I'm gonna to go pretty fast but you know stop me if you got a question by all means jump in with a question and I'll do my best to answer it and if you would like to review this material later 
first, we're recording the session. We're going to send a link out so you can watch it again later. And um, you can download the PDF of my presentation. I think Lynn's going to post a link. Or you can do that real quick if you like. You can just download the PDF and study it at your leisure. So see if that link pops up here in the chat area in a minute. And Steve says, is there going to be a test? Absolutely, Stephen, there's going to be a test. And the test is uh, your P&L statement, ultimately, right? If you choose to use any of the material that I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to go through, I'm going to give a brief overview of Ichimoku Cloud. And then I'm going to talk about Elia Wave. And it'll be a brief review. I'm, I'm really going to assume you know a little bit about Elliott Wave. If you don't, I think you'll learn something. If, um, if you've been confused by it before, maybe I'll help clear it up. But then uh, I'm going to talk about how I use Elliott Wave and Ichimoku Cloud together. And I'm going to talk about adding risk management to make a pretty complete trading system. And I'm going to show you how I scan, um, how I scan the market. We're actually going to scan the S&P 500 this morning and narrow it down to a, a handful, a, a couple of, of uh, high potential trades. And I'll, I'll take a look. I'll analyze any, uh, any stock charts that you are looking at. I would like to see analyzed using these uh, techniques. So let's jump right into it. Okay. And there's the link for the uh, PDF download. Okay. So Ichimoku Cloud is also known as Ichimoku Kinku Hyo. Hyo right? Hope I say that right. I speak a little bit of Japanese, but not a lot. Okay. It's a, it's a versatile indicator and it, 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 it's great at identifying trends and defining support and resistance areas, and it does provide some trading signals. Okay, we got a picture. It was developed in the 30s by a gentleman named Goichi Hisoda. Uh, he was a Japanese journalist, which is interesting. Most indicators and studies are done by mathematicians or traders, but he was a journalist, and he did this. He came up with it in the 30s, and he refined it for over 30 years, and finally published it in 1969. Um, there's a picture on the right there of, of uh, Hasoda-san, and you can see he's got a little glass of beer, and it's probably Kirin uh, Ichiban, which is the, it's kind of like uh, Japan's Budweiser, right, kind of the high-volume uh, popular beer. Ichi, you know, so Ichi means one in Japanese. If you were to count to five, it's Ichi ni san shi go, Roku, Ichi ni san shi go, that's five. Um, so again, Ichi moku kinko hyo translates into one look. Equilibrium, equilibrium chart. So it's a technique for having one look at, the, at a chart that tells you a, a ton of information. All right, so let's look at it. Here's what the Ichimoku Cloud looks like on a trading platform. This is TradeStation. And Ichimoku Cloud comes on all the major trading platforms, and it's free. You can install it um, without any cost. Um, again, it does a great job of identifying trends, predicting support, and resistance for a trend. And you can see I've got four components to the Ichimoku Cloud indicator. There's a yellow line here, there's a purple line, and then there's this cloud with a green line on the upper boundary on an uptrend and a red line on the lower boundary on an uptrend, and they reverse on the downtrend. And I'm going to talk about these elements individually. Okay. Now, if you've looked at Ichimoku Cloud before and if you've used it, and you're looking at my chart here, you're going to see that there's a, there's a component missing. So there's another component to Ichimoku Cloud, which is uh, it's called a lagging, the lagging line, right? It's, uh, um, a, what's the, the name of that? Uh, Choku or something like that. Um, it, it's a lagging line that I didn't find useful in the technique and the way I apply and use Ichimoku Cloud, so it's not on here. So if you don't see it, that's why. Also, if you're looking at some of the same charts I'm looking at, you're going to find out that uh, my settings are different. I am not using the default settings that are typical, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Let's look at the components here. So the first thing is what's called the Tenkan line. Tenkan equals conversion. Tenkan in Japanese is conversion in English. It's similar to uh, a fast moving average line. I think most traders are familiar with simple moving averages. And so I've bolded this yellow line. This is the Tencon line, or the conversion, or the fast line. Now, this is a little bit different. It's calculated differently than um, a simple moving average, um, the fast simple moving average. Simple averages are calculated from the closing price of each price bar. And the Tencon line is calculated um, whatever the look-back period is, and that's a variable, 
But whatever the look back period is, the 10 con line is calculated from the high and the low, the average of the high and the low for the look back period. Okay? This 10 con or fast moving line, it, as it crosses over the slow line, it can indicate a trend change. It could also have some false calls, and we're going to talk about how to deal with that. Okay. The second thing is this purple line that I've bolded here a little bit. This is called the Kaijun line, or basis. Kaijun equals basis or baseline. This is similar to a slow moving average line. If you had a, a simple, uh, you know, simple moving average two, two line indicator, this would be the slow line. And again, it's calculated just on a longer look back period, and it's taking an average of the high and the low of the price bars rather than the average of the closing price, like a simple moving average. Okay. It shows a longer term trend. It's a little bit smoother than the, than the fast line. And again, a crossover of the fast over slow, up or down, can indicate a, a trend change. And again, it can have some false calls. So the next component here is called the Senku Span A. Right? And Senku means going first or proceeding. In, uh, in, in baseball, in Japanese, the person at the top of the batting order would be the Senku. Okay? Uh, it, this Senku Span A forms the faster part of the cloud boundary. boundary. And it predicts, you know, on an uptrend, the upper region of support. Okay. And um, if you look down here to the left of the chart, you'll see that the green uh, span A line is below and the, and the shaded area is red. And we'll talk about the shaded area in a minute. Okay. But it's the leading uh, line going first. Uh, here's the Senku span B. It forms the slower part of the cloud boundary. And it, it predicts future support boundary and uptrend or resistance in a downtrend. And it's, and it's pretty accurate until the trend changes. <laughs> okay. This uh, shaded area between span A and span B is called the Kumo, or cloud. And, this, and the, it, it's the space between the, the span A and the span B. And it, it's defining a region of support or resistance. Now, the thicker the cloud, the stronger the predicted support or resistance is. And the thinner the cloud, the more chance that price can break through that cloud. And you can see that this uh, cloud, if you look off to the right of the chart, it's projected um, a number of price bars out into the future. And, and these span A, span B lines are actually derivatives of the uh, Tincon and uh, uh, Kaijun lines, right? So, again, thicker cloud, more resistance, thinner cloud, less resistance, okay? Again, jump in with any questions if you like. So, when we get a fast crossover, Tincon over Kaijun or fast over baseline, in conjunction with the position, relative position of price to the cloud, it can indicate a new, a new trend and um, entry points. Now, the entries would be when price, when we get a crossover of fast over slow over the baseline and we get a price close above the cloud, that would indicate a bullish entry. Now you can see I've indicated on this chart on AEM and I picked this chart because it, um, it demonstrates several things. It shows some false signals and it also shows a really strong trend for me. All right, so we get some false signals. We've got a technique we can use to uh, manage risk on these, on, on trying to get really, really early entries um, and if we're wrong, and if it's a false signal, a way to get out of the trade really, really fast with very little loss. And you can see when it's right, it's really right. Look at, look at the trend it called here on AEM. Um, when it finally took off, right, we had an entry with a you know, crossover and a close above the cloud, and then it really, really, really took off. Okay? And as long as we can have a trading system that, you know, you know all trading systems have some, some losers, as long as we keep the losers really small, and the winners way bigger, and we have more winners than losers, we're going to be profitable. Okay? Um, you can see, as this trend got going, that the cloud really did offer some good support um, to this trend. The price pulled back to the uh, span A line, but as it approached it, it then reversed and, and headed up, and the trend continued. So pretty good stuff here. Now, if I were to evaluate the Ichimoku cloud as a complete trading system, here's a heuristic that I've developed that on the left, I've, I've got all the criteria that I think is important to have 
in a complete trading system. That would be trend identification, early entry, support resistance, price target, risk management, trade management, and exit. Right? So I think the Ichimoku Cloud does an excellent job of the first three, identifying trends, identifying early entries, and some support and resistance areas. I think it does kind of a poor job. It doesn't give you any price targets. You don't know when the trend's going to end. It doesn't really give you the best tools for risk management or trade management. The cloud offers some ideas and some boundaries or range for support, but not an exact exit point. Right? So I think it's got some really, really good characteristics, but I think it's missing some components that are needed for a complete trading system. All right, so again, jump in if you got any questions. I'm watching the question question window, and we'll we'll field those as they come up. Elliott Wave. So interestingly, I don't have a picture of Ralph Nelson Elliott here, um, but uh, he's the one who developed the Elliott Wave theory, and he did it about the same time that Goichi was developing the Ichimoku Cloud stuff. Uh, he, Elliot published his a lot sooner, um, but the idea behind Elliot Wave is that there's a that that price moves in waves, right? It moves between optimism and pessimism in natural sequences or waves in a series of impulsive and then corrective waves. So maybe you've heard of of Elliot Wave, and uh, maybe you're rolling your eyes a little bit. Some people people that love that love Elliot Wave and they and they kind of got a good handle on it, or um, they've been frustrated. They've tried it, and it's just like, oh, that's so complex, and there's 50 patterns to memorize, and nobody can agree on wave counts. Um, uh, my mentor in this in this business was is Bennett McDowell, and he is, you know, I learned Elliott Wave from him, and he's come up with a way of really simplifying Elliott Wave, and now you know his wave counts and mine and his students and my students, we all we don't argue on wave counts. We we are pretty much on the same page. And I'm going to show you on a couple charts here. It does not have to be complicated, right? So we're just looking for, for a five-wave sequence, um, you know, a, a wave one, a wave two. Then the big wave is three. Three is the big impulsive wave. Four is a, is a pretty big corrective wave. And five is the next impulsive wave. So we really tr want to try, try and trade three and five. And quite often we will trade four if that's all that's available, you know, in the instruments we're looking at. Okay. You know, speaking of Bennett McDowell and Elliott Wave, he literally wrote the book on it. Um, it's a new book that came out this year. It's called Elliott Wave Techniques Simplified, again by Bennett McDowell. And I was honored he, he had me write a chapter in the book. And so that's available on Amazon. I think Len's going to post a link there. And you know, I don't get any commission or credit. It's just I think it's a really, really valuable book and uh, tool. And if you're interested in learning more about Elliott Wave, I think that's the place to go. Um, because it really simplifies it and gives you some very actionable things to do. All right. Here's Elliott Wave on a chart. So this is a, a mining stock, V-A-L-E. Um, we traded this. I run a stock pick subscription service, and we traded this um, earlier this year. We traded Wave 3. So from where you can see I've got the waves labeled, you know, Wave 1 up, Wave 2 down, Wave 3 up, big dramatic price move. We traded that Wave 3, and we made a really nice profit. That was one of our bigger wins this year. It was awesome. We have a Wave 4 down. Wave 4, you can see it. And it retraced into a Fibonacci price zone. Okay, The Fibonacci retracement zones that we expect for a Wave 4 are 38.2 to 61.8. It went right down into that range. Perfect. And then we saw evidence of a Wave 5 starting. And what's really cool here with a... Uh, with a uh, with Elliott Wave, particularly Wave 5, is we can come up with a price target zone. So we got Wave 1, we got Wave 2, we got a Wave 3, we got a Wave 4. We get four waves that meet expected parameters. They're following an expected pattern. Then the probability of the fifth wave of the pattern being completed is pretty high. right? I like that. I like high probability in my trades. And we get a price target zone. So we just, you know, to measure... Uh, the Wave 4 retracement, we use Fibonacci retracement tools, free tools available on every major trading platform. And then uh, to project Wave 5, we use Fibonacci extension zones. We measure from the bottom of Wave 2, top of Wave 3, bottom of Wave 4, and we get a projected Wave 5 target zone. Okay, a couple questions coming in here. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> so Steve, uh, so Fibonacci interrelated astrophysics, da 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 da. Yeah, it, it, we just simplify it, Steve. Right? We just look. Um, the market does seem to move in um, in definite waves. Now, not every chart you look at is going to have a clear uh, Elliott wave pattern. That's a mistake some traders make is you pull up, you know, any given chart and you go, I just can't get a wave count on that chart. Um, you know, the reason probably is that there isn't one. So not all charts follow the sequence. The power is when you do have a chart that does follow the sequence, it becomes highly predictable and highly probable that it's going to follow it. Steve Rich is asking, why is the peak at 38.1 and not at the end of wave one? So what Bennett teaches, what I've learned that I think is absolutely correct, is we measure wave three from wave two. So wave three to wave two. And, that, and in this case, it gives us a wave four retracement right down to the bottom of the expected range. Now, wave four can go a little bit below, can be a little above, right? That's the sweet spot there, okay? And then Frank is asking on wave five, when do you get out? Well, that's a great question. You're a great setup, man, uh, Frank. And we're gonna um, we're gonna show that in a couple of slides. Okay. So that's just the basics of Elliott wave. We're just looking. You know, we don't need to overcomplicate it. If we we, we find the biggest, most dramatic price movement on a chart, and that's wave three. Um, <laughs> uh, Steve says he, he thinks I'm a good trader, and he's learning it from me in my room. Well, thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. So we we'll just look for the biggest, most dramatic price movement. Um, that's easy to spot wave three. Now you can't always see that wave three is going to happen. That is unknown, right? They come usually from channel breakouts or at the end of other trends. Okay, so spotting a wave three in advance um, is guesswork. Spotting wave three after it happens is easy, and that's okay because then if we get wave four, we got another impulsive wave coming, and that one um, this is an easy pattern to spot, right? Big move correction to the big move. When we look at some live charts, I bet we find some examples, okay? And Caesar saying, yeah, I think you got it. You, you find wave three and then you wait for five. Perfect. That's exactly right. That's what Caesar said and you're right, man. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Don't see a wave three? Go find a new chart, okay? You'll find it. They're out there. So here we combine Elliot and Ichimoku on one chart. And this gets pretty interesting now because what Ichimoku did, did was gave us some really, really early entries as these waves formed. So look at the wave three entry. Now, now we didn't know it would be a wave three, but we knew it was breaking out of this. This was a bit of a channel here, right? We said it's breaking. It's a long entry. Is it going to be a wave three? We don't know. Um, but we had a crossover. We had a crossover of back here of fast over slow, and we had price close above the cloud. That's a long entry. Now, there might, might be a few false calls, and we'll talk again about how to <clears throat> limit risk on that. But this one was right. It made a, it made the perfect entry, right? We went up. We did this, and I'll show you again how we get out of the trade. But then after wave four, we got another long entry right here on this price bar because the the fast is over the is crossed over the slow, and we got a, a price bar that closed above the cloud. So we got a long entry there. Super. So if I were to bring up my uh, my heuristic again here and, and analyze, you know, how, how complete is the trading system if we have Ichimoku Cloud and Elliott Wave together? Well, it's starting to fill in some of the blanks, right? Because Elliott Wave gives us excellent price targets, and it gives us a really good um, exit point um, at, at the price targets. But it doesn't really help us with risk management or trade management. So we need just a little bit more. All right, now I'm showing the chart with the applied reality uh, software going here. It's uh, art. These these green pyramids and these bottom indicators here are all part of the art trading system from Traders Coach Bennett McDowell. So I use them. I think it's the best um, you know commercial indicators available. And trust me, I I bought just about every one there was before I landed on the best one. Um, so I got some depth of experience there, right? Like most people on the call, probably we, we've chased lots of indicators, right? Um, different trading systems. It took me a long time to dial in the system I'm using, and um, now I'm really happy with it. Anyway, these pyramids call out, um, 
you know, Dow theory tells us that a trend moves, an uptrend moves in a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And it's an uptrend until that pattern's broken. Okay, these pyramids call out unique higher high, higher low sequences where the ratio of the up leg momentum is greater than the momentum of the down leg. So these call out very special um, higher high, higher low sequences. And you can see they're pretty accurate. And what we do is we trail our stops. You can see these white lines, hopefully. We trail our stops up to the basis of the pyramids after they're formed. And that gives us excellent trade management and risk management uh, tools. Now, you can still use this technique without um, buying the applied reality trading software. I think it's good. I think it's worth every penny, right? In fact, I'm an affiliate. I can sell it to you um, with a 50% promo code. And I paid full price, <laughs> and it was worth every penny at full price. But you don't have to have it, so I'm not here to pitch uh, art software. But you can do it without it simply by using uh, Dow, Dow theory rules of higher high, higher low, new high, trail your stop to the previous low. Then you get a new higher high, higher low, new high, trail your stop to the previous higher low. Hope that made sense. That's a lot of HLLH, right? But it's pretty simple once you play with it. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Trail your stops up to previous lows after new highs are put in, okay? And so if we trail our stop up, once that sequence is broken, that's when we get out. Like you can see on this wave three, trailed our stop up to this final pyramid or higher high. And then when we took out the that low, right, that's when we'd be out of the trade. So you don't catch the absolute top. That's all right. We stay with the trend for an awfully long time, right? So that, if we put them all together, we go... We got the Ichimoku cloud, we got the Elliott wave, and we employ a legitimate risk management system either using the applied reality software or simply Dow theory, right? Now we're hitting on all cylinders, right? We've got everything here uh, marked as excellent. I think that's a true analysis. And that's, that's the system I'm using to trade today, and I'm getting good results. All right. We're going to look at some live charts now, I think, is what's next. Yeah, real charts. Okay, everything I've been talking about is it, it works on any instrument, any time frame. I mean, sometimes you hear educators say, yeah, my program works on any instrument, any, any time frame. Well, this does with the, with the caveat, you know, when there's good signals, right? Just because you like trading the E-mini on a two-minute time frame doesn't mean there's going to be good signals at the time you want to trade, right? But if you do find... Um, a good pattern, then it's absolutely legitimate. Okay, people are, are typing in some symbols. We're going to go look at them. Hey, let me show you one of my favorite trades right now um, that we're in. This is ACTG. This is a stock. Okay, Acacia Research. So, you know, I have a stock pick service. This is one I published. We got into this at 507, right as it broke. I'm following my own rules, right? It broke um, fast over uh, slow. Above the cloud, this is where I first found it. So we got in this at 507. It's sitting here at 627. So we're already in a 20 over 20% profit, which is pretty nice. We've already taken a third of the position off to lock in some profit. But there's a long way to go up to the target here. And I'm simply using uh, Fibonacci retracement. So remember I said wave three is really easy to spot. Here it is, right? The biggest, most dramatic price movements. This downtrend. This is wave four up. So I'm simply measuring. Here's wave one. Two, I'm measuring a Fibonacci retracement. And I expect wave four to go up here, 38.2 to 61.8%. And so I'm being conservative. I'm taking my target at the bottom end of that at 892. You know, an entry at 507, target at 892. That's a pretty good trade in my book, and we're on the way. It's looking good, but there's still good entries. And the way you figure that out is you look at current price right here at about um, 628, current stop, 507. So the distance from here to here compared to the distance from here to the target, right? And the distance to the target is about 2x. So 2 to 1, risk to reward, reward to risk on this. So still totally legitimate entries. And so if you're interested in a trade that I like, um, ACTG. All right. I said uh, we, can, uh, we can use it for day trading. Let me bring this chart over. Here's my day trading uh, setup. Make sure that there it's projecting okay. So uh, over here, I've, what I do day for day trading is I use range charts. So here's oil, 
on a range chart. I use uh, eight tick range. Range charts are kind of like tick charts in that they have nothing to do with time. They are all about price movement, right? You have to have a certain price movement within the range to build a bar and then it moves to the next bar. Um, so you can see we had a pretty good move. This wasn't stellar, but pretty good. Had a couple of false calls. But then after it, you know, crossover, close above the cloud, pretty nice move on oil on Friday. Wasn't, wasn't great. There was some, uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, there were some monsters. And what I do on the range chart is I just back it up. I got the 10 minute chart going above here. So just it's standard 10 minute chart with my indicators. And I'm only going to take a long trade if the, if I'm with the, the longer term trend. So I, I want the 10 minute chart to be above the cloud before I take a long or below it to take a short. Okay. Uh, for most, those, those are the high probability low risk trades. Look what happened on gold on Friday though. This, here's a monster. Who, who would like to have been in that trade, right? And I don't think there was any false calls. So we got a, a, a nice crossover, close below the cloud, and it went down. So we would have had an entry right here at about uh, 1357. And you're just using these Dow rules, right? Lower, low, lower, high. You, they're, they're out. We're out here, 1341. So uh, 57 to 41. What is that? Uh, 16 points on gold. And that happened pretty quick. That entry was at 9 o'clock, and you were out, whatever that was, around 10 o'clock probably. That's a, that's a big trade, man. If you trade gold futures, that's a big trade, right? And we could have got it here uh, in conjunction with the 10-minute chart being okay. Uh, so there, there's a look at day trading. Let's go look at some of the charts. You guys are typing in some symbols here. I want to I wanna get to this. I want to... I want to do it. So R E G N. All right. One of the things I teach um, when I teach people about trading is we're just looking for a shape. We're just looking for a shape, and this one's got the shape. Um, and I can tell right. Eh, I can't tell. I have to measure it. Okay. But see this. Remember, we don't have to get over over complicated about things, right? Um, big move up and a retracement that, that's got my attention that it's worth analyzing. So let's see if this big move up, right? And here's the absolute low. So we just want the first move up, next move down. There it is. I don't have to get over complicated. Okay. Now, this is so it, it broke the rule, so it's no good, man. Um, so what happened here was there was a wave four and then a failed five. It did not go on to make new highs. So we thought maybe could this be four? It could be, but it's not because the absolute max it can go down is right here to the 76.4 line, and it went right through it. So this is not an Elliott wave pattern. So too bad because otherwise we could have had a good wave five, but it's not an Elliott wave pattern. So goodbye to that. Now what we do have is a pretty clear uptrend, right? Now the, the problem is where is it going? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, but we have a crossover, and it's above the cloud, and we have a rising cloud, right? It's getting thicker and thicker. So it looks like it's going to provide some pretty good support. So, you know, if this is one that you have other reasons for wanting to get into, it's in an uptrend. The problem is we just don't know how far it's going. What a spendy stock, right? I would definitely do that one with uh, options. I don't, I'm not too excited about, you know, 400 bucks a share. Guild. Uh, let's take a look at Guild. Gilead. So this was a very old analysis. I've looked at it before. Okay, this is a messy chart. One of the, uh, I mean, there, there's a downtrend, but it is a chaotic and uh, volatile downtrend. One of the things when I'm teaching is I, I say, hey, let's let's identify, let's let's answer, let's categorize a chart into one of three categories. Is it a trend? Is it a channel? Or is it a mess? And when I look at Guild, I go, yeah, it's a trend, but it's also a mess. So I don't, it's too volatile for me, right? Maybe a great day trading or short-term trading stock and on lower time frames, you might get some kind of tradable pattern out of it, but no good for me, okay? Don't be offended. I, I like you, I just don't like your chart. FedEx, I've traded FedEx. Um, uh, 
So what do you guys think? Trend channel or mess? <laughs> if you're to look at FedEx here. Any opinions? I think it's kind of a mess. Yeah. Kind of a mess. Uh, we traded it last year. Now we, this was a five-wave sequence here. Three, four, five. We traded wave five on this at the beginning of the year. This, I don't know what this is. This is a complex correction. It's a mess. So that's what I'm saying. We don't have to sit here and go, okay, how do I trade FedEx? I ain't going to trade FedEx, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Raj would like to look at EXPE. I'd like to look at it too. Expedia. Okay, this is interesting. So we may have that pattern that I was talking about. Let's see where, in order to analyze a trend, you have to find out where it started. So if I want to know, this is looks very much like a wave three to me, but to do any kind of analysis, I have to find the absolute beginning of that trend. There it is. Okay, there's, it, there's wave one and two right there. Wave one and two do not have to be big. Okay, relative to wave three. It's just the first move up, first move down. People stumble on that just a little bit. Let's go up to the top. Uh, I don't know if I have my settings right. Did I miss it? Yeah, I missed it. Let's do it again. Pretty nice. Right into the expected Fibonacci retracement zone. Now look how long. This is a, a slow mover, right? Wave 3 is from October of 14. So this is a multi-year move. So I wouldn't expect to be in this a few weeks, okay? But it's kind of a powerful powerful pattern and we do have targets, right? We'll just go from there to there to the bottom of 4 and we've got a price target up here. The bottom of the price target is 144. Now as you expand this, here's something else that's that's cool that's going on here. Right? We got the Ichimoku cloud telling us, wow, now it crossed over once, so I would wait. I would wait, get another crossover. You're up above the cloud. You got some pretty good support. Let's see if that support holds, right? And here's another thing. Look at these previous highs were almost equal. This one was a little bit higher, but we just took out both of those previous highs. So we had a kind of a complex correction, but now it really looks like if this if it puts in a new high, right? We'll have this Dow thing of a higher high, higher low, new high. So about the time we take out this high, we should have the crossover, and that could be a pretty good entry up here, you know, what, 120, 121, something like that. We would then put our stop under this low, and we got a target way up here. That could be a good trade. Um, yeah, uh, Mark's making the comment, Expedia is risky, travel stock, terrorism, Zika virus. Yeah, um, I'm a technical trader, right? So I go look for big news that would disrupt the trade, you know, if I'm trading a uh, biotech stock, you know, is there a big drug announcement coming, you know, uh, is there pending bankruptcy, pending M&A action, something like that. Other than that, I trade the chart, man, because um, that's kind of built in. That's why I like technical trading as compared to pure fundamental trading is that um, the current picture we see reflects all those opinions, Mark. All those opinions, all known data is reflected in the price pattern here. So, you know, we don't have to uh, go understand really all the factors that are influencing traders' behavior because we can just sit here and watch traders' behavior. And that's ultimately what matters, right? And, I, and believe me, I used to be a fundamental guy. I've got an MBA. I, I did all kinds of earning statements. and oh, It makes me tired to think about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so there we go. Mark says it looks like it does look like a good pattern. Okay, uh, where are we at on time here? We, we're good. We're good. Let's look at a couple more. Um, John saying uh, he like he's he day trades NQ. Maybe we could look at it with a time frame. I recommend. So you know, it let's let's pull the let's pull the uh, day trading screen over here. Let's look at NQ. Okay, the last week. Um, Day traders would have been, I think, better off playing golf, walking the dog, sleeping in, going to the gym, anything but day trading. It's been tough. The market just ain't moving, man. The market just ain't moving. Um, 
So I really like for day trading, if, you, if you're going to trade the whole session, if you're going to trade the whole session, 10 minute is a pretty good, is a pretty good uh, uh, trend uh, barometer. And then like here on NQ, I would, I would be trading the, uh, the two minute. I'm not sure what the range value is. I'd have to go calculate to use a range chart. Two minutes, not bad, right? So, you know, this, this would have been a pretty nice trade. Uh, early in the uh, late in the session right because we could have used Ichimoku here to get an early entry on this crossover uh, price above the cloud and then we started and what I do here is I go in on these early trades with one contract and then as I get pyramids I actually scale in start adding to the position as the trend gets um, further confirmed right so that's a technique and I'm gonna talk about my class I got a class on, on Ichimoku cloud where I talk about my proprietary settings and my exact trading rules. But that would have been a really, really nice trade on uh, in Q, uh, John. And we could have got a much earlier entry than, uh, than the pyramids would have given us there. All right, Netflix. Somebody, it's uh, uh, ROBT, wants to look at Netflix. See, see I've analyzed this before and we got um, we had a, uh, a wave three, a wave four, and it almost made it. In fact, it, you know, close enough to call it that it made it down to the, the bearish price target zone down here, right? But now it's heading back up above the clouds. So I think that's kind of done. And look at this bop, 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 bop. It's kind of a complex correction right now. So I would wait for clarification. There's just not, the picture's not clear enough anymore on Netflix for me at this time. Uh... See if I'm caught up on s signals here. Um, let's look at BI. Uh, no, let's look at uh, where are we at? Eh, I better I better move on. Okay, I think I'm almost caught up on on symbols, and that's okay. Um, almost caught up. So let's let's talk about scanning. Okay, I said we were going to scan the entire S&P 500. So let's do that real fast. So what I've done, here's the, the radar screen in TradeStation. All platforms have uh, something like this, some means of adding indicators to a, you know, a grid like this and looking at values. So I've got the entire S&P 500. Turns out it's 506 stocks. So I guess we should call it the S&P 506, but they're all here. And I've added the Ichimoku Cloud indicators, the actual data behind the indicators here. And then the art scanner, which is an add-on piece of software from traderscoach.com, which gives these, you know, art signals, bullish pyramids, bearish pyramids, all this kind of stuff. And so we can scan through this list. And what happens here with Ichimoku Cloud is it, it will tell you, like here on A, right, that it's, it's in an uptrend and that price is above the cloud. Okay, cool. Now, it could be in an uptrend and not above the cloud. Um, and it also tells you if it's new and all that kind of stuff. Um, if I can combine, you know, wow, if it's uptrend above the cloud and I have a bullish pyramid, not here because there's eight consecutive ones. That's too late. I already know that's too late. I don't want to go look at it. But like this one, what is this? Apple, right? Up above the cloud. We've got an uptrend and we've got a bullish pyramid. That might be a really, really good trade. Um, trying to do this. There's no real good tools to sort and to filter here in Radar Screen. It does a great job at displaying the data, but it, that's okay because I can just click here, hit Copy, like that, and while I bring up Excel and paste it in there and and put in a couple really simple uh, logic statements and say, you know, hey, if the trend direction is down and the price is below the cloud, then that's true, true for a bearish signal, and if if uh, price is up and above the cloud, then that would be true as a uh, as a uh, bullish signal. So uh, that's pretty easy, right? Freeze, freeze, freeze the top row. There we go. Okay. So, and I just then I can just sort this thing. I can sort on true bear signal, sort on true bull signal, and now I can kind of drill in and start looking at my art signals and go, what are the, what are the absolute best possibilities here, right? And I did this in advance so we could go fast. I went, I looked at a couple. It's like, 
hey, what if I get true bearish signal and I've got just a just a bearish pyramid? Well, that's what I would want, right? So I scanned through a couple of them really quick. I came up with this one, EQT. Did this, you know, I got to that symbol in like a minute. That's really all it took because we should be able to look at a chart in about five seconds and know whether it's even worth analyzing or not because we're just looking for those patterns, right? That shape. Is it in a channel? Is it in a trend or is it a mess? If it's in a trend, did it retrace? Look at this. Clear trend, right? This is worth analyzing. Clear trend. This is the bigger price move. So this is the retracement. And so I put my retracement lines on there. I measure it, right? And I go and find, uh, I had to find where this started way back here. Okay, there's where it started. There's the absolute high. So, oh, is that the absolute high? No. There it is. There it is. Um, wave one, wave two, we have to shrink it up to see the whole picture. There. There. When you analyze the trend, you've got to go back and find where it started, right? So there it is. One, two, three. Four, up into the Fibonacci zone, right in the middle of it, in the sweet spot. Now we've got a crossover. We're down below. we got a close. even got a pyramid. and we got a target zone way down here. We can get into this trade now with, hey, you're getting a free stock pick here, man, part of this webinar, because I think I'm going to publish this one to my subscribers. So um, there's our stop. Entry here. Target way down here at 41 bucks. Right? This is a monster trade, and it's perfect. Setup is perfect. So that's how we can use the scanning tools. Now, uh, when we did the earlier webinar, a couple of folks said, so in this uh, spreadsheet, right, here we've got some, some bearish trades identified. We've got the art signals over here. We've got some bullish trades identified in the, in the, in the art signals. People, hey, can we have that spreadsheet? Yeah, absolutely. If you want the spreadsheet, send a note to Lynn. Um, she had her email there. Uh, send a note to Lynn, and she will send you a copy of that spreadsheet. So that's a freebie. From this uh, webinar you can get that spreadsheet that's Friday's data so it's fresh data on the S&P 500 if you want it all right let's uh, talk about some next steps we talked about scanning again I use I use the radar screen the cloud indicator the art scanner and Excel pretty straightforward okay so what do you do next what do you do next? I've, I've presented some information. So if you're comfortable, it's like, yeah, you're, you, you know, you, you've got the art tools or, or you don't, you don't, you don't need them, but you got the Dow theory thing and you, and you're pretty comfortable counting um, Elliott waves. Um, give it a shot, man. Um, I always, I always try to convince people, you know, when you try something new, you add something to your trading or you try a whole new system, try it out in SIM. Um, this system works because I know it does because I'm making money with it. But I, I don't know if it'll work for you, right? The, the trading, any trading system has the technical components of the system and then there's the psychology, right? And there might be a trading system you use with great effect that I can't use and vice versa because it, you know, our psychology and the trading system has to make sense to us and we have to be able to follow the rules and, you know, do it with discipline. So try it. Try it out in SIM. And if it works, you know, get a good, good sample of trades to make sure it's legit and, and then rock and roll. Go, go make some money. Um, if if you're like what I'm showing here and it makes sense to you, but you're like, I don't want to learn that. I don't want to do that. Right? Well, I'm doing it, and you can follow my picks. So I publish my stock picks, and and there's a subscription service where you can just follow along. We're getting some really really good results, and um, the folks who are following are pretty happy. So we'll talk about that in just a second. And then I'm launching a uh, Ichimoku Cloud Training module. It launches. Uh, 17th, so a couple days from now, and I'll tell you what's in the class and how you can get into that here. Okay, let's talk about the picks for a second. So here's the results I get. Uh, we've been doing this for uh, a handful of years now. Back in 2013 and 14, um, uh, you know, market was trending hard, so we were like 57% in the portfolio, 37%. Last year, 15 was it was tough, right? The market channeled and had some dramatic moves. Um, but we still made just almost 30%. Pretty happy with those results. Felt good about it. And this year, we're on we're on track to uh, to match or beat last year. And if we get some dramatic moves, I think we're going to beat last year's performance. Okay. So uh, again, I win I win 70 to 65% of the time. I lose 30 to 35% of the time. The losers are small. So having risk management and a method for keeping losers small is critical. 
We keep the losers small. We try and get the winners big, and we try to win more than we lose, and we're profitable. Right? So if you want to follow along with my stock picks, these are this is stuff I'm you know I'm in it. I'm, I'm these are the ones I'm buying my own account with my own money. That's how I started. I was just trading and was successful and talking to different folks about it. And they go, hey, why don't you share your picks with us? And I did. And then finally go, I think maybe there's a business here. right? And, and it's been doing pretty well. I I include option contracts. So I give I give the detail where you can trade the stocks. Just go buy the shares or sell the shares if that's how you like to do it. Or um, I love trading with options. So I give option contract details. You can do it either way. I give updates every week on the positions, midweek if, if something happens. I give a narrative on how the trade's playing out, why I'm in it, what my rationale was. I give an initial entry, target, and stop price, risk management tools to determine the right position to take to limit risk. I give updates on moving the stop as we trail it up. I give updates on locking in profit and finally when we exit the trade. So I'm there the whole way through the trade giving um, guidance. Uh, List price, 127 a month. It's worth it because people are making money. We're profitable. I'll give it to you for 23% off, so 97 a month. Good price. And you can try it. You can take a trial for 10 days. So in 10 days, you get two weeks worth of picks. I, I publish on the weekend, right, one to two picks, sometimes midweek, and update. So you have a good flavor of it. And you can take that 10 days for 7 bucks. And I think Lynn's going to post a link. There it is. So seven bucks, and and during that ten days, you can call me up. We can have a one-on-one. -on -one. I can answer any questions you like. And if you take a look at my website and the picks and what we're in and how it works, and you go, eh, um, not my thing. No hard feelings. Just send me a note. Give us a call. We'll give you your seven dollars back. Okay, so it's basically a free trial. I'll just ask for seven bucks to make sure you're serious. All right, we're serious, and we just want to work with serious folks. So seven bucks, but you can get your money back after giving it a try. I think that's really fair. It's a, it's a good deal, and most people who subscribe end up staying because we're making money. Um, Trevor says, hey, are you affiliated with Traders Coach? So we work very closely. We're separate entities. Um, we do lots of webinars together. Um, if they if they sell my products, they get a commission. If I, if I sell their products, I, I get a commission. And I do have a, uh, uh, a link and an affiliate code and discount code so you can buy their products, right? Yeah, I get a commission from that. Um, SC is asking for the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, uh, hopefully, Lynn's on that. James says, hey, if I have the Ninja platform, can I approximate your results? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's platform independent, James, right? Because we're, we're, we're working off of, you know, the, the data feed is the same, right? Every chart has open, high, low, close, and the indicators are derived from that. So, absolutely. Uh, John says, hey, do you day trade and have a live trading room? I do have a live trading room uh, for day trading, John. Uh, maybe Lynn could post a link to the live trading room. Uh, you bet, James. You're welcome. You are welcome. So that's the stock picks. If you're interested, you know, that's a pretty good deal. Seven bucks. And then it does auto. So on day 11, you're going to get charged $97, right, unless you cancel. If you cancel, you're out. Right, but on day eleven you're gonna get charged ninety-seven dollars for the next month. It's a month-to-month -month deal. You can cancel at any time, so that's how it works. Uh, I have a, I have a course launching. Uh, John's asking, what do you, what markets do you trade in your room? Well, John, this is it. This is our live trading room. Uh, you know, when it's slow, we'll take a look at stocks. We'll do a little teaching and whatever people want to look at. But the main instruments we trade here are. Uh, I got the NQ. It's the ES, the gold, and the oil futures is what we trade. Okay, that's that's what we do in the room. It's open from 6.15 a.m. to 8 a.m. Pacific time, Monday through Thursday. All right, Ralph's asking for the spreadsheet. It's probably easier because Lynn's probably is busy trying to keep up. If you just send her an email, then she'll have time to uh, to uh, respond and give you that spreadsheet. So it's Lynn at, uh, at uh, followmetrades.com. So here's this course, right? Uh, it's going to launch on August 17th, and I think, uh, yeah, Lynn just posted her email, so send her a thing. Send her an email, she'll send you back the spreadsheet, okay? So this uh, this Ichimoku Cloud course, right, it launches this week, the 17th, pre-sale. So after it launches, it's going to be 149 bucks, and right now you can get it for $79 pre-sale before it launches, and I think there's either a link already or it's coming, 
You guys are keeping her busy. All right. Um, so the link for the course is coming, and as soon as it comes, I'll click on it, and you can see what's. Uh, people ask, you know, what's hey, what's the course outline? How long does it take? All right. Yeah. So what period of time will the course be? James asked. So it's it's self-paced. So you'll get written material. It's a PDF you can download with all my uh, my proprietary settings, my exact trade setups. You'll get a cheat sheet you can print out and tape next to your computer for different trade setups. Um, there will be a couple of live webinars that we'll hold at a couple different times for actually you know live training so you can log in and ask questions and we just walk through it step by step. Email support if you have questions about the course you can email me and then if you if you want to you can set up time and we can talk one on one. So John says he's traveling August 17th. It's okay, you can sign up, John. You have lifetime access to the materials, and the webinars will be recorded if you can't make it, so you can look back at them. And again, I'm here to answer any questions on an ongoing basis. So yeah, if you're if you're traveling on that day, that you know, don't don't let that be a barrier to uh, to uh, taking advantage of the course. Okay. And there, Lynn has posted the the link. I don't. I don't see the link, Lynn. I see text, but not the link. We haven't played. Trevor said, "Hey, why don't you just upload it to go to webinar?" We haven't played with that feature. I don't know if it'll work. That handouts thing, maybe. Maybe that would work, Trevor. Um, we haven't tried that. It's a good idea. Still waiting for the link to the course. Oh look, I've got it in the presentation. Let's see if it works. Here we go. There it is. So here's the page you go to. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and give you the link. Looks like it's not working for Lynn for some reason. There. There's the link to the course. Um, so here's a course outline down here. You know, I go over the basics of Ichimoku Cloud in more detail than we did today. Uh, I go through my proprietary settings, how to use it in conjunction with Elliott Waves, my exact setups with a cheat sheet, um, different techniques to use in day trading, how to scan, some more detail on that. And then, uh, again, you get printed material, recorded videos, live webinars, printable cheat sheet, email support, one-on-one -on -one time. And you have lifetime access. You do it at your own pace. Come back anytime. I'll answer questions. I do that in my other courses. The folks who have taken my other courses are, you know, they still ask me questions, and I'm happy to uh, interact. So we're, right now, 50% off. Um, again, it's going to be 149. That's a typo. Um, it's going to be 149 list price after the 17th, so you can get it now for half price. So uh, pretty good deal and you can just click the button and sign up and get in and on the 17th we'll rock and roll man uh, John says how do we get access to each Mooka cloud indicator hey it's free John um, it, it's built into trade station for ninja I think you have to go download it somewhere um, uh, I'm not you know I know like uh, thinkorswim has it for sure you know all the other ones it's a standard indicator it's free you just gotta um, find it in your platform. What what trading trading platform are you using, John? The Ichim uh, JK is saying, "Hey, the Ichimoku course is a subscription." No, no, it's a one-time payment. One-time payment of seventy-nine bucks. You get the course and you got it. And you own it for life, right? You can reaccess the, uh, the material. Okay, John says he's ninja. Yeah, I think you got to go download that. And if you search on it. There's going to be people selling it, but there's free versions, and I think there's a free version from Ninja, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're right up against an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Hey, you're welcome, John. Absolutely. Do, uh, John saying, do we need to tweak the signal numbers? Yeah, I use different settings. I do not use the default Ichimoku settings. I've done a lot of back testing and optimization. I, I think I got better numbers, and they're uh, in the course. Trevor, do you know Hubert and Rob Hoffman? I've heard of them. I don't know them personally. Frank Frank has asked like three times. He wants to look at CLDX. Let's do it before we leave here, Frank. I will 
we will look at CLDX for you. John's asking, what's the Excel sheet? The Excel sheet um, is, is here. It's where I did a scan on the entire S&P 500 and identified some potential trades uh, on here. So that's what the, the, the sheet is. If you want a copy of it, John, um, send the note to lynn at uh, followmetrades.com. All right. Oh, CLDX. I think we've looked at this one. So this has been in just a massive, what, Celdex Therapeutics. Massive downtrend, right? Massive downtrend. Um, the market is unhappy with them at this moment. But if it were to rebound, you know, again, this is simple. One, two. Move down, move up. From here down to here. If a recovery were to start in this, just a corrective wave to that downtrend, what would it look like? Well, it would be monstrous, right? It would be monstrous. From current price, 446, up to the bottom end of, uh, that looks like about 13 bucks, right? Wow. Now, has it proven that it, you know, look at that channel that it's in. If you zoom that in, that's not an impressive move just yet, right? I would, I would draw some, some indicators, uh, some, some lines on here like this, and I would want an enthusiastic break through that channel. And then it would be above the cloud. We'd have a crossover, and it would really look like it was going to take off. Maybe take out this high on that potential pyramid at about 519, 518. If it does that, then it's really off and running, and, it's, you know, it's going to, it, it's going to double, so... You don't have to worry about getting in at the exact penny. Make sure it's really going, and then we're going to run, man. Okay? Uh, John's asking, I guess, for the stock picks. Are you, is, it, is it live? I, uh, are you asking about the stock picks, John, or about the live trading room? Right? Uh, hey, you're welcome, Frank. Um, either way, you know, and for the stock picks, I send out updates via email, and I post them on a secure area of my website. So subscribers log in, and you can see the latest information on picks. And if I change it, I send an update by email. Hey, it's changed. Right? We're, we're moving to stop. We're taking some profit or something. The Excel trading sheet, you know, it's an S&P 500 daily chart, Steve, so it's good for, you know, a couple days a week until things move grammatically. Uh, Daniel, is there going to be a replay? Yeah, we're recording it. We're going to send a link out to everybody who, who registered Daniel, so you'll get it. You'll get it. Okay, great. I think we're good. I think we're good. We're a few minutes over. That's okay. I'm glad to take the extra questions, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Hey, thanks so much for attending. Really, it was great for you uh, to be here. I enjoyed pre presenting and uh, that, taking time out on your Saturday. I hope you found it valuable, useful. We will send a link out um, with the recording. It will also have all the links that we had here for you know, the course and the stock picks and stuff like that. Okay. Great. Take care, and we will see you uh, in the market and hopefully at the next webinar or wherever we are, our paths cross again. Thanks, and again, have a great weekend. Bye.